Good morning, and we're gonna go over the live letter. I'm super tired, I just had some coffee, and we're just gonna breeze right through this. Pretty straightforward. There will be spoilers in here, so if you are not to Endwalker, then I would wait or just put this on sound and not look at the picture. So <laughs> um, there's your spoiler warning. Very early in the morning, so I have my coffee and hopefully we can get through all of this awesome information. We're just gonna jump right into it. We get new main scenario quests, new side quests. They did delay Tataru's Grand Adventure for a later patch, um, just with all of the stuff that's coming out. They felt like it was gonna bog up a little bit. New role quest. These, you do have to finish the five role quests that are already at the end of the game. So make sure to complete those if you want to jump into the new role quest. We're getting our new travel quest at 6.15, which is the Arcasadara. And that will probably be a month after 6.1. So 6.15. We're also getting the Hildebrand, Omega, and new custom deliveries, 6.15. So again, a month after. It looks like Omega is going to be delayed a little bit, probably to like 6.18 when data center travel come they're doing all the duty support for the trust system and trying to implement that for the new patches coming up and pretty much getting rid of cape west wind they're no longer going to be a trial i think it's going to be an instance duty that's just one of the quests really really early on in the game they're also going to make changes to the main scenario roulette as well and this is where they're going to break up a lot of those um, dungeon make up the praetorium into like multiple different Thing, so now it's no longer like an hour-long dungeon. This is going to be the menu for the trust system. So pretty much you're going to have NPCs to which dungeon you're going into. Speaking of new dungeons, they're completely revamped some of the earlier on dungeons. This one I didn't even recognize when they were talking about it. But this is the literally the third or fourth dungeon, the Tataru Rock one that everyone gets lost in and you have to collect those little energy, green little energy things. This looks like a completely new dungeon. It's awesome. If they're gonna make all the dungeons look like this eventually, I'm all down. We're getting our new dungeon trial, Unreal Trial, new Alliance Raid, which I'm super excited about. I don't have any of the footage here, but I will link the live letter video if you want to look and hopefully put the timestamp of when the footage pops up if you want to see it. All of the plots are going for sale. We're getting our adventure plates, which you're going to cover later, portrait editor. The unending codex, that's pretty much just a reference for characters that you've come across in the game. It's really awesome that they're putting that in for us. So how many times have I played a quest and I'm like, wait, who's this again? And I have to like figure out how I know this person. We're getting new Hrothgard hairstyles, which I mean, they look okay. I'll show you, I have them here. We're getting 20 glamor plates and now you can be able to use them in all sanctuaries. So before you could only use them in the three main cities or really big main cities, but now you can use them anywhere where there's a crescent moon at your experience bar. You'll be able to try on, um, you'll be able to try on Mog Station items from your bed now, which I have a picture of that. The one thing I'm kind of excited for is the check mark displayed items to obtain minions and mounts. So now whenever you go to the market board, you can see that you've already acquired that minion or mount. Awesome. These are the new Hrothgard hairstyles. <laughs> I don't mind these, but um, I think this one is my favorite right here. My issue is that I feel like it's making it more like human and I want more like in character hairstyles. I just, <laughs> it's just to be a to be hairstyle. Oh my gosh, it's I can't. We're also getting some job adjustments. Um, There's not the full entire list. They won't have that until April 11th, to which I will do a video for. Um, but the few things they did change, I was kind of like, oh, okay, I didn't even realize that was an issue. They're doing some potency changes for Machinist. They're changing Samurai and getting rid of uh, Hisatsu Kaiten, which is your damage buff. Actually going to be really nice rotation-wise because you're pretty much using that ability all the time. And they're going to be guaranteeing critical hits for Samurai for the major um, abilities. Madari Setsugetsu, Kai Kaishi Setsugetsu. Setsugeka, Ogi Namakuri, and Kaishi Namakuri. Those are pretty much like the end, like the the big hitter on your rotations. For Ninja, they're gonna now have Mug be the debuff to increase enemies' damage for the entire party, and then Trick Attack is now gonna be changed. So then your 
damage is increased. So um, a little bit of adjustment. Dark Knight, they're um, improving Living Dead. So now you can restore a large amount of HP when you land attacks. They shorten the animation lock for Dragoon for jump actions, which is awesome because the first jump action you get is a really hard lock. Searing Light, which is the damage buff for the party, will be casted by you and not by your Carbuncle anymore. White Mage, I like this one for White Mage. The Liturgy of the Bell can now be ended and it will restore the amount of HP dependent on number of stacks remaining. Uh, and this is way better because now we can actually utilize this ability instead of having to get hit to get the heal. So it's now just turned into like a gigantic heal. And it looks like they just increased some radius sizes for some of the other healers and stuff. Um, they did say that this is not all of it. Every single job is going to have some changes to it. So it sounds like it's gonna be pretty extensive, which is why I'm gonna do a separate video for that on the 11th when that comes out. Our new tribal beast tribes in 6.1 patch. So this will come at 6.15. So pretty much a month after 6.1. We have some awesome new mounts of flying hippopotamus, some sort of monster. And we get that as a mount. There's this bird, that one's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can zoom in. Yeah, it's kind of difficult to see, but um, it looks really cool. This one looks really cool too. It's like an alligator dinosaur thing. Pretty into that. We are finally getting this as a mount. Um, this is from Shadowbringers, the near Automata, the near Automata raid. This is so cool that we're getting this finally. As a There's another picture of it. It's so cute on the Lala. <laughs> These are some of the minions we're getting. I don't know why. I totally love this minion. I want it. It's a little car. This is another one. This bird is hilarious. They made a joke like that they're really good at making faces for minions and stuff. I love that. Kangaroo. This is like a cute dog, like a little, um, I don't know the name of this kind of dog. I'm sure you guys can tell me. We're also getting the Dream Fit. This is when you go use your bed at the inn. You can try on stuff from the Mog Station. So that's pretty cool. I think that outfit's new. Um, they like kind of revealed it, but that's a really nice outfit. Hopefully they have figured out hats for Vieras at this point. All housing plots are gonna be for the lottery system. Pretty much everything's gonna be the lottery system now until further notice. It's gonna be a nine day cycle, which means you have five days to enter and they said that there's no like benefit to rushing to enter. So just as long as you're within the five days and they even give us the initial schedule. I'm guessing that on the sixth day, like right after the five days, they're gonna announce the winners and then the winners have four days to claim the house. I'm kind of bummed that it's a nine day cycle, but I will say I still think this is better than having to camp. The camping people have been camping for years, camping for years at placards and they still have not got a house. So. I think this will allow more people to play the game and to do other stuff than to just be clicking on a placard or driving people to get a bot to click on a placard. We got the new Extreme Trial, um, the Mitchell Ballads and Singer. They made it a point to say that this is going to be very difficult because it is the last bot. It's gonna be hard. I might jump into it though, cause it's an extreme, so. These are our new plate designs. You pretty much have the profile and the portrait, which all of this is editable. At Editable. Editable. There we go. Editable. Um, or changeable, I should just say, make it easier on myself. All of this is changeable. Um, you're, they said it's going to be a huge time sink. You're going to be able to have different ones for different jobs. You're going to be able to put all sorts of stuff. You're going to be able to change the G pose. Like it's just going to be so extensive. So you can have one each for your own job, like you have Bard, Red Mage, and all sorts of information on it. This is going to be what the base is gonna look like, and then you're gonna have to go in and edit it yourself. They're gonna have some templates too if you're not really into like spending time to doing that, so um, you don't have to worry too much about that. This is just showing like how you can edit the lighting and the G pose and everything about it. So I'm sure I'll be spending a lot of time doing this. <laughs> they got new PVP updates. I am gonna do a separate video for PVP. Um, I'm super excited. I love PVP already, but they pretty much explained all of the crystal conflict, revamping all the PVP actions. And now we each get our own limit break, which is freaking awesome. Cause before you shared it with your party of eight. So now we each get one. I'm sure they're gonna decrease the potency, but it's cool now that you don't have to like share one. The reward systems are pretty awesome too. Rival Wings on a hiatus and the feast is gonna end. 
So Rival Wings, they have to balance now, probably because of all the changes they made. They said they just ran out of time. The Crystalline Conflict is going to have ranked casual matches, etc, etc, 5v5. This is going to look what like when you go into it and you can see everybody's card. This is how it's going to be helpful. I love it. They're going Astra and Umbra, which is from Black Mage, which is hilarious. I wonder, I'm guessing that's going to be like what um it's always going to be but of course for yoshi p he's black mage and this is reflecting black mage's rotation the new pvp rewards look so good i am so excited about the pvp rank season rewards or series reward you're pretty much gonna get experience no for series experience playing any pvp mode so just doing your daily frontline and it says individual matches will continue to reward xp pvp xp tombstones and wolf marks this is what the like thing is going to look like and the rewards you're going to get you can see it's mostly going to be trophy crystals which is the new pvp currency there is going to be rewards in between that like coffers and things like that i see one we do get at 25 it's like a coffer a glamour coffer that looks so sick and pretty much these carry over so if you get enough trophy crystals one season you they're gonna go over to the next season and then you you can use them to purchase all of the items and stuff for the next season and if you have like it looks like it's a 20,000 cap though so this is the level 25 this is the level 25 glamour like this looks so amazing so amazing i'm so hoping for viera that you can wear the helmet because if you can't wear the helmet it's gonna ruin everything but this is giving me some huge lord of the rings vibe <laughs> like it's so cool i can't wait to get this we also do are getting ranked match seasons which i'm like kind i bet you we're gonna see like tons of people get like it's like rating they're gonna get five people together um because obviously if you're playing with the same people you can play a little bit better and have communication but i think we're gonna see some like groups of people get together in order to be like ranked number one they're doing the tiers pretty similar to how a lot of games do the tiers bronze silver gold platinum diamond and then there's crystal as the last one i think or maybe diamond is supposed to be crystal and then there's risers they're calling them you start at like bronze three win a few matches bronze two win a few matches bronze one then you move up to silver you don't lose your like if you're from silver i don't think you can go back down to bronze yeah you can't drop down a tier you can just drop down a riser so you can lose stars and like say if you're like bronze one you can drop back down to bronze three if you're losing a lot so bronze three being the lowest. Oh yeah, no, crystal is, uh, there's another one after diamond and that's crystal. For the PVP seasons, we're going two seasons in one series. So it looks like series is gonna be from each big patch, 6.1 to 6.2 ranked match seasons will be um like 6.1 to 6.8 and then 6.18 to 6.2 the glamour though fire and this is the glamour from the garo collaboration yeah garo collaboration event returns and this is some of the glamour you can get from it this is the live letter there's so much stuff i just wanted to do something easy and straightforward hopefully this guys helps you with all the new information coming out um, I'm super excited. I absolutely can't wait. There's going to be so much to do and so many things to complete and so much new adventure and journey. So uh, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you want to make sure to get updated for more guides and news and hit that subscribe and like button down below as it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. I really hope you guys have a wonderful 10 days getting ready for patch 6.1. I will see you guys all in my next video. And if you want to watch more Endwalker tutorials, then you can click here.